if things are really recovering, why is this still being done? As we move toward the end of the year, if things are really recovering, why is this still being done? December 19th, King World News, a portion of today's note from Legend Art Cashin, on this day, in 1732, a 26-year-old Bostonian transplant, living in Philadelphia published a helpful calendar and counselor, which he called Poor Richard S. Almanac. The publication, containing pithy wisdoms, like early, to bed early to rise makes a man healthy, wealthy and wise or, Washington, D.C.S. favored, a penny saved as a penny earned became an instant success in the colonies. The revenues allowed Benjamin Franklin, to retire at age 42. Since golf was not available in the neighborhood, he squandered his remaining years. By discovering electricity, inventing the lightning rod, the iron stove, bifocals, and the glass harmonica. The next week he developed still standing theories on meteorology, heat absorption, electricity, and ocean currents. In his spare time he founded the first insurance company, fire department, public hospital, public library, night patrol, and first militia. Seeking a break he became colonial postmaster and civil defense chief for the French and Indian War. Tiring, he was chief delegate at the Albany Conference, which organized the colonies, and then was appointed chief negotiator with the British Crown in London. When negotiations failed, he returned home to help draft, and then pass the Declaration of Independence. He was then sent to Paris where he won the support of the French which event won the revolution, for the colonies. He returned home, and helped draft, and again pass the constitution, of the new nation. After that he did little that was important aside from a few inventions, and a couple of immortal publications. To celebrate take a high school graduate out for a flag and a veil, and explain the team concept, consensus thinking, and why little can be accomplished by one man alone. The tax bill rally continued Monday, and it was anything but a one-man show. When the opening bell rang, all 11 of the S&P sectors moved higher, and some smartly higher. Frustrated with a fed of my friend, Peter Bukvar, the chief market analyst for the Lindsay Group is a little frustrated with Neil Kashkari, of the Minneapolis Fed, who appeared on CNBC this morning. Here is a bit of what Peter wrote this morning, ILL say this about 2018, if global equity markets are right about a continuation of the global synchronized recovery, and the hopes for a robust acceleration in US growth in particular on the heels of the tax bill, there is no way interest rates are going to be sitting at current levels. They are going up and considering how much debt has been accumulated globally post-recovery, expect a less quiescent year next year. U.S. fiscal stimulus, for some, came just in time, as it will attempt to offset the monetary drag that will pick up steam, but who will dominate is up in the air, after the victory for the former in 2017. Don T even get me started with Fed President Neil Kashkari, who still thinks the Fed funds rate should be at 0.625%, and is trying to explain his stance. He believes in depression era monetary policy with equity valuations matching the year 2000, the US economy possibly in the third straight quarter with 3% growth with fiscal stimulus ahead, wage pressures building everywhere, commodity prices near 9-month highs, core CPI at 1.7%, 
well above 0.625%, and a continued pileup of malinvestment due to a fake level of interest rates which upends creative destruction. And, if we go into a recession at some point, and all the Fed has is 625 BPS of ammunition either way, he doesn't he vote next year, so his practical viewpoint is irrelevant now. We may have to get some well-laced eggnog over to Peter, to get him back to the spirit of the season. Overnight and overseas in Asia, markets are a bit mixed. Tokyo is fractionally lower, while markets in India, Hong Kong and Shanghai are all moderately higher. In Europe, London is mildly higher while markets on the continent are modestly lower. Among other assets, gold is flat and crude is a touch higher on rumors that crude inventories may shrink. The euro is a bit firmer, against the dollar and yields are down a BIP, or two. Consensus A House vote on the bill is said to be possible today. If it passes, and vote comes before close, it could re-spark the bulls. Stick with the drill, stay wary, clear and very, very nimble. Eric Dubitin, buying into a collective economic delusion, Rory Hall the people in charge of the financial and economic systems, in the Western world have been able to stave off the greed or depression, for close to a decade. As we report every day of our existence the system has been showing very severe cracks, and dealing with many implosions, over the past several years. We stand guard every single day for the inevitable transition, that must occur. For today, the paper charade, lawlessness, and corruption continue to work, but for how much longer will this system be allowed to survive? I sat down with Eric Dubin, to get a glimpse of what he sees as our economy continues to morph into something almost unrecognizable. I thought it was going to blow this year 2017 for 4 to 5 years, now, I have been thinking 2017 with a year, where the stresses would be too great. The very act of what we have seen that has created the ability for the powers, that be to maintain the system, and the house of cards, that exist today has been level of credit creation, that is absolutely mind boggling. 300 billion dollar per month at times through various ways has been pumped into world financial systems tilda eric dubin the daily coin we see other nations building out the necessary infrastructure to move away from the current world reserve currency global trade system we also see a renegade venezuela Stephen and shout from the rooftops their nation will leave the world reserve currency system, and create new commodities back digital currency. If Venezuela actually pulls this off makes it happen I am not even sure what type of backlash this would cause. It would certainly have a huge impact on the global currency market, and it could possibly be the spark to create global war. Eric offers his insight to this situation, and it may be one of the best scenarios to play out for both Russia and China. This would be the distraction needed for China and Russia, to put their few remaining pieces of the puzzle in place to take the next step, as, in rolling out a new global trade settlement system. These various threats to global trade settlement we see arising from governments are the exact same threats we see coming from the citizens, people, around the world. Governments like the nations that form the BRICS, SCO, BRI, and the AEU are all putting into place a new system. We also see the people rising up and making their voices heard in the same manner enter Bitcoin and the cryptocurrency market. We are not endorsing, or saying, 
that cryptos are going to save us from the bankers what we are saying is people around the world are now ready to experiment with just about anything that is not tied to a bank owned government issued fiat currency and are willing to forge their own future are cryptos currency according to overstock.com and a growing number of companies around the world bitcoin is in fact currency this is a really great show with just enough time for Eric and I to really dig into these topics without taking up too much of your valuable time. We re really glad you pushed play and hope you laugh a little as you learn little something. Then was appointed chief negotiator with the British Crown in London. When negotiations failed, he returned home to help draft and then pass the Declaration of Independence. He was then sent to Paris where he won the support of the French which event won the revolution for the colonies. He returned home and helped draft and again pass the constitution of the new nation. After that he did little that was important aside from a few inventions and a couple of immortal publications. To celebrate take a high school graduate out for a flag and a veil and explain the team concept, consensus thinking, and why little can be accomplished by one man alone. The tax bill rally continued Monday and it was anything but a one man show. When the opening bell rang, all 11 of the S&P sectors moved higher, and some smartly higher. Frustrated with a fed of my friend, Peter Bukvar, the chief market analyst for the Lindsay Group is a little frustrated with Neil Kashkari, of the Minneapolis Fed, who appeared on CNBC this morning. Here is a bit of what Peter wrote this morning. ILL say this about 2018, if global equity markets are right about a continuation of the global synchronized recovery, and the hopes for a robust acceleration in US growth in particular on the heels of the tax bill, there is no way interest rates are going to be sitting at current levels. They are going up and considering how much debt has been accumulated globally post recovery. Expect a less quiescent year next year. U.S. fiscal stimulus, for some, came just in time, as it will attempt to offset the monetary drag. News allowed Benjamin Franklin to retire at age 42. Since golf was not available in the neighborhood, he squandered his remaining years by discovering electricity, inventing the lightning rod, the iron stove, by focals and the glass harmonica. The next week he developed still standing theories on meteorology, heat absorption, electricity, and ocean currents. In his spare time he founded the first insurance company, fire department, public hospital, public library, night patrol, and first militia. Seeking a break he became colonial postmaster and civil defense chief for the French and Indian War. Tiring, he was chief delegate at the Albany Conference, which organized the colonies, and that will pick up steam, but who will dominate is up in the air, after the victory for the former in 2017. Don T even get me started with Fed President Neil Kashkari, who still thinks the Fed funds rate should be at 0.625% and is trying to explain his stance. He believes in depression-y monetary policy with equity valuations matching the year 2000, the US economy possibly in the third straight quarter with 3% growth with fiscal stimulus ahead. Wage pressures building everywhere, commodity prices near 9-month highs, core CPI at 1.7%, 
well above 0.625%, and a continued pileup of malinvestment due to a fake level of interest rates which upends creative destruction. If things are really recovering, why is this still being done? As we move toward the end of the year, if things are really recovering, why is this still being done? December 19th, King World News, a portion of today's note from Legend Art Cashin, on this day, in 1732, a 26-year-old Bostonian transplant, living in Philadelphia published a helpful calendar and counselor, which he called Poor Richard S. Almanac. The publication, containing pithy wisdoms, like early, to bed early to rise makes a man healthy, wealthy and wise or, Washington, D.C. as favored, a penny saved as a penny earned became an instant success in the colonies. The revenue